Hey, I'm Jen Hearn, and this is Daily Writing Advice. If you haven't heard of Tony Robbins, he's a personal development speaker, very well known, and he's done a lot of research into human psychology. And I'm sure that as a writer, as a fan of the creative process, you like human psychology, because writing is really about humans and trying to understand the way that other people live so that you can create interesting stories with interesting characters. So Tony Robbins has this interesting idea of the six... I was so close to holding up seven fingers, <laughs> that was dangerous. This idea of the six primal human desires. And these are massively useful for storytellers because so much of a writer's job is getting into the head of a character and figuring out what makes them tick. What is their motivation? Why are they doing the things that they do? And these six human needs, six human desires from Tony Robbins can go a long way to explaining that. So I'm going to give them to you here and I'll give you an example of a well-known literary character that exemplifies each of these desires. So number one, certainty, the assurance that you can avoid pain and experience pleasure. So out of all of them, this was actually the one I struggled the most to come up with an example with, but then I realized exactly who was a good case study. Voldemort from Harry Potter, because what he seeks is immortality and isn't anything more certain than the knowledge that you have somehow managed to elude death and be able to live forever in this immortal form. So that was number one, certainty. Number two is the polar opposite, uncertainty, or also known as variety or you know new stimulus or novelty. And this is important because we crave difference, we crave change, we crave the novelty in our lives. And the character that I think exemplifies this the most is Holden Caulfield from The Catcher in the Rye. So this guy is a very like stereotypically angsty teen. I didn't personally enjoy him that much as a character, but his entire motivation is sort of about just seeking you know novelty i guess like he doesn't want to be fixed down he's very restless and angsty again you would kind of expect that in this novel which is often held up as like the cornerstone of angsty teen character drama number three significance so feeling important valued and special the character who i think best thumbs this up is ozymandias from watchmen his whole motivation I mean, you just look at his name, Ozymandias, right? He's trying to connect his name with the name of um, Ramesses II, I believe it is, who was an Egyptian king, uh, Egyptian pharaoh, rather. And basically, Ozymandias is like, hey, I've got the same name as this great person. That makes me great, too. That makes me special. And Ozymandias' whole art, for those who are familiar with Watchmen, is about attempting to basically do something that no human has ever done before and trying to unite the entire human race. Number four, connection slash love. So seeking a strong emotional bond with someone else. And the example I've picked for this is Henry de Tamble from The Time Traveler's Wife. He is the aforementioned time traveler. And basically his bond, his love for his wife is what is driving him through this plot. Despite the fact that the conceit of the story is that he involuntarily time travels between different eras and stuff. So it's really hard for him to kind of have a stable relationship. Number five, growth. So the ability, the desire to extend oneself beyond your current capacities and learn and grow. And I think the character that exemplifies that amazingly well is Charlie from Flowers for Algernon. So in Flowers for Algernon, Charlie begins the novel as a man who is mentally slow and he has scientific procedures to basically boost his IQ. So the story revolves around this idea of growth. And by the time we get to the middle of the novel, he is obsessed with growth. You know, he's reading a ton, he's learning a ton, and he's really trying to expand his mind. And lastly, number six, contribution. So the desire to give to the community to basically kind of sacrifice yourself for a collective or greater good. And I think no better character exemplifies this for me than Dalinar in The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, who is my favorite author at the moment. And Dalinar's entire arc in this book is all about just being 100% selflessly committed to serving the realm that he is entast, entast? entrusted with protecting, even if it means he has to sacrifice things that are going to put him in really bad positions later. So those were the six human needs, according to Tony Robbins. Um, and I think these characters give really good examples of how they can be applied in a story. Let me know in the comments below what other characters exemplify these human needs, you know? And also, when you're using this in your story, you don't have to just pick one human need and say that your character is solely motivated by that. There's a reason why there's six, and there's a reason why some of these needs, such as the desire for certainty and the desire for uncertainty, are in conflict with each other. 
they can be like that in your characters as well. So your characters don't have to just be one dimensional. They can all express these six human needs in varying aspects and that can make them more fleshed out and realistic.